Hello. Um, welcome back to Black Girl Magic Book Chat. My name is Larissa. I'm the African American Resource Center Coordinator. And every day, every Monday <laughs> this month, I am sharing with you stories by black authors in the genre of horror and suspense and sci-fi. This week, I read The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval. I finished reading this like 10 minutes ago and I'm still sort of feeling it. Um, so excuse me if I sound kind of rambly because I've got my thoughts together, but you know how as soon as you finish reading, all of the feels kind of are, they just sit there for a moment. So they're still sitting. So I read The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval. Um, this story follows a man named Pepper who's actually white, um, but the the author is a black man. So it follows a story, follows a character named Pepper. Um, Pepper is put into a mental hospital one day after, one night after he has an altercation with some police officers. So what happens is Pepper is trying to help his neighbor, a woman he's interested in from her abusive ex as he's, I guess, uh, harming this guy, planes clothes cops come up and Pepper's like, well, I don't know who y'all are. I'm going to fight y'all too. He obviously doesn't know that they're cops. So he's arrested for assaulting a police officer. However, instead of taking him down to the precinct, they take him to a mental hospital. And we find out that the reason they take him to this hospital instead of the precinct is because he they don't have to do the paperwork like they there's no paperwork for them if they take him to this hospital instead of to to jail as they should have deal with that what you will um so what happens is pepper goes to intake he's like okay i'm gonna get out in a couple days this this is horrible but i won't be here for very long that's not true so he's in there he's upset he doesn't understand what's going on he's like i gotta leave so one day he tries to escape he like rushes through this family trying to get to the door obviously that doesn't work so they drug him they drug him and he loses time he's in a haze for a couple weeks and in this 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 haze of semi-consciousness he apparently signs off his right to leave I guess so he stays longer this is where the story gets sort of wild so this is a horror story it's branded as a horror novel like look right fire devil sounds scary so it's branded as a horror novel in this hospital there is this entity at the end of a hallway that no one's even allowed to go on behind a silver door they call him the devil. That's what the patients call him. Um, or it. Whatever. They've seen it all. all every, almost everybody has seen it. It's got the body of a man. It's got the head of a beast. Everybody knows it lives there. The nurses, the orderlies, the patients. It's not a, sec it's not a secret. But this, this devil has harmed other patients, has killed other patients, and they just let it stay. So Pepper's like, and Pepper gets like harmed by this thing. So he's like, we gotta do something. Like this is this this ain't what's up. <laughs> so Pepper, along with his roommate Coffee, Coffee is an immigrant from Uganda. So there's Coffee. There is Luchi, who is a 19 year old girl. She's sort of um, violent. I don't know if they ever say what her diagnosis is, but she's in there for like fighting. Um, and then there's also Dory, who was an older woman. I think they said that she was schizophrenic. And so they, they formed this sort of interesting group. Um, so they say, okay, we're going to get this beast. The night that they decide to do that, things go belly up. Things do not go as planned. And the night ends with one of them dying. And they are killed by a cop. 
they're shot several times and it's horrible so the beast goes back behind his door pepper is like what is happening this is the moment where pepper realizes that life inside of a mental hospital is is insane and so that's the other side of this because if you remember pepper has not been diagnosed with a mental illness pepper is just in here right they have just kept this man in this in this hospital and we can assume it's like for money or you know something more patients doing money i don't know they never really say but he's still cognizant even drugged up he like he knows what's going on like when he comes out of that haze he's like okay this is what's happening in this building and so the other part of this horror story is that the conditions at new hyde which is the name of this hospital the conditions are scary y'all they give the patients meds three times a day pepper has not been diagnosed like i said and three times a day this man gets doses of medicine not to say the people who have been diagnosed and all of the things that they are giving them to temper them, right? So people are drugged up and they do this to make them compliant because if they're compliant, they can't do anything. Disobedience or even just like the, the demand for respect gets them put into restraints. There's one instance where Pepper is restrained for several days in his bed they bring him food they, they let go one arm so he can eat and sometimes they don't even feed him if they're disobedient in a way that they don't like the nurses and the orderlies they don't want to be there they're like low-key afraid of the pa of the patients and so that kind of manifests in in rudeness in in treating them like they are being done a favor right I'm reading this other book called disability visibility um, for a work thing and there's that's it's a book of short stories about people with various abilities and in this book there's one story about what it about what it means to be institutionalized and how when people are institutionalized it takes away their autonomy it takes away their ability Abilities in some ways to do because they are treated in a certain way and after a while you get used to being treated that way and you kind of become the way you're being treated so and I recognize that mental illness there are a wide range of mental illnesses it manifests itself differently in different people but mental illness or no people are people they deserve to be treated like people they deserve a chance to to navigate the world with the abilities they have and to learn how to be in it. They should not be considered a burden or treated as if their thoughts and their ideas and their feelings are irrelevant. In this book, y'all, that is exactly how these people are treated. They're dismissed, right? Like they say something and you know, sometimes it does sound insane, but instead of, you know, they're just like, well, he's crazy. So like, we don't have to listen to that. And you're drugging them. So after a while, their thoughts do become muddled. Their actions do start to become irrational or illogical because this is the only way they know how to, to express that, hey, what you're doing to me doesn't feel good. And so as I'm reading, I'm like, this, this is insane because it's almost like in a sense, the devil part, it's like a distraction for the patients. Like... It's obviously not the devil, <laughs> right? Like this, this is it's, it's like it's not the devil. It's living in this in this building. So nine times out of ten, like you you assume as you're reading that it's probably a patient because they're not gonna keep a beast in this hospital. Um, but so it's like the the devil becomes like a distraction, a way to forget that they are stuck. The people, and not to say that these people don't have people who love them. They don't, they, like, they have family days. People's, you know, spouses and siblings and parents come. But they're obviously put in this space because they have been considered a burden. Like I said, they have been put aside because people do not want to deal 
with the way that their illnesses manifest. And so they're just, they're there. And think about it. You wake up, you take drugs, you eat a horrible, the food's horrible too. You eat a horrible meal, you sit around, you may have a book, you, you can watch TV. You get drugged again, you get another meal, you do the same, you hang around, you get drugged again, you have a meal, you go to sleep. And it's a cycle that repeats itself every single day. There's no stimulation. There's no, there. I mean, like you're talking to the people, but like everybody else is also like drugged. <laughs> so there's only, only, you know, <coughs> excuse me. The conversations that you can have are only so stimulating. So it, it was not what I was expecting. It was, uh, I know I used the word thought provoking a lot, but that's one of the really cool things I'm learning about this horror genre is that like horror is being used as a, a metaphor in some ways, a way to like get another message across. I cannot say exactly what the message of this is, except that sometimes institutional institutions are horrible. I'm sure that's not true of all of them. I really hope that's not true of all of them. Um, but in this story it is <laughs> and it really and in that book com um along with the disability visibility book that i'm reading for another thing it's really making me think of the own bias we all we have biases about people with mental illnesses rather whether or not we want to say that we do um and so it made me confront those and to really think about how do i in my head, how do I see these people? How do I view these people? How do I view their issues and their thoughts and their, like, you know what I mean? So, I really enjoyed it. The Devil and Silver. I recommend it just because it was well written. It was, it was a little bit funny too. The author, Victor Laval, would kind of do these little asides. He'd make a comment and in parentheses he like say something I'm like, haha, that's kind of funny. So, I recommend it. Y'all, this has been great. Like, I really love these stories. I really have. Um, this video was kind of long, so I'm going to shut up and I'm going to go. Next week, I am reading a book called The Striver's Roll Spy. I think I got it right here. By Jason Overstreet. Another book by a male author. Um, I think it said, this is like a flapper costume or something, right? So I think it's set um, in the 20s or something. So that's going to be fun. See y'all next week.